What's happening, Fish and Friends? I am out today on a beautiful summer day to talk about three different casts that I guarantee will help you grow as a bass angler. Now, guarantee or always must, those are things I use very lightly, but I honestly do believe that these three different casts will certainly help you out in certain situations, especially as a bank angler. You all know as well as I do, we don't have all the real estate to fish like the guys in the boat, so you gotta make the most out of the spots you got. Now this video is meant to tie together a bunch of questions that I get asked from a bunch of you new subscribed fishing friends out there. You know, Debo, do I really need to learn any other cast besides the regular overhand cast? It does me fine. Or Debo, how about when you're pitching and flipping, do you set your reel any different to pitch than you do to cast? Or Debo, how about the sidearm cast? Every time I throw it, it goes way off target and into the bushes and I get stuck. Well, I'm gonna discuss all three of those things and more in today's video. And I really kind of want to relate this video to golfing. Now, trust me, I'm not a huge golfer. I've only been golfing a handful of times, but I know the basics and when you start out, you start out with the driver, right? You're looking to get distance, put that ball out there as far as you can with some decent accuracy, but, and that's what I kind of equate the overhand cast to. It's like you're driving golf. Now with that overhand cast, one thing that I see a lot of new anglers doing is reaching with that cast and sailing it all the way up in the air, you know, a big, huge arc, and that's a perfect time to get a backlash. And don't reach back like you're chopping with an ax. See, a lot of new people go here with it all the way up over their shoulders and try to really push it out, extend those arms. So there's a couple things I can tell you that will help solve both of those problems. That's number one, to keep your elbows in. And number two, don't worry about bringing this rod any farther back than your shoulder, right here. You don't need to lift this butt up all the way up here perpendicular to your body. I keep it close to my body. And what that's gonna do when you release, you're gonna wanna let that release point go just a little bit later. What happens when guys go all the way back here and throw it up, goes all the way up and down. One, it's not subtle, and two, it's not very accurate. With you know a larger lure like this, this is a, a chatterbait type thing, as soon as that wind catches it and that bait stalls, the spool doesn't, and that's gonna certainly be a backlash. So those big high arcing casts are really what's gonna equate to a lot of those big overhand cast backlashes that you get. So again, to help on that overhand cast, keep your elbows tucked in your body, not all the way out here, reaching every time you cast. I usually just use two hands on the rod, one to hold the butt, one to control the bait caster, keep those elbows in, and cast here. It's gonna put that bait in more of a gentle arcing motion instead of, you know, a McDonald's arch all the way up to the top and down. So if you folks out there who are struggling with that overhand cast, try to keep that bait straighter out instead of going all the way up. So one more time in slow motion just to show you what I mean. Now that overhand cast is great for getting a lot of distance, but a lot of times it's not the most accurate. You know, a little bit of wind takes it. You can have that bait go off two, three, four feet with some wind. So to those people that say, Debo, do I really need to use anything other than the overhand cast? Yes, I honestly do believe you will really benefit from the second cast, and that's the roll cast or the sidearm cast. All right, so what's so special about this sidearm cast? Well, to me, going back to the whole golf reference, it's like when you start to pick up your irons, you know, a pitching wedge, something like that, where you're not trying to get crazy distance. It's a little, you know, shorter to mid-range. You gotta have some decent accuracy to it, but you still wanna cover a little bit of ground. And also it's got some very good specialized uses, especially from the bank. So in a spot like this, for example, where I've got a nice shoreline here where there's a bunch of bushes hanging over, I like to use that sidearm cast to stay nice and parallel to the water to get under those overhangs. Because if I were to use an overhand cast right here and send it over the top of all those, I'm either one, gonna get snagged if it goes up over the branches, or two, I've gotta be safe and stay out away from those overhangs, maybe a foot or so. And oftentimes those big fish are up under those overhangs and those shade pockets. So with that sardom cast, you can stay nice and parallel to the water, get under those overhangs and target those fish. Now with the sidearm or roll cast, the big things to keep in mind is you wanna keep that bait nice and parallel to the water. I'm not crazy throwing this with a ton of power arcing up and coming down. I want it to stay nice and parallel and come under the overhangs just like that. An overhand cast, I wouldn't have been able to do that. I would have got caught on that little branch and probably been very frustrated. Now the second thing I really like about that sidearm cast is again on those days that you have wind. If it's really windy, I'm not even gonna try to throw that bait way up in the air with an overhand cast. I'm gonna use a little bit more power on my sidearm cast to keep that bait low and parallel to the water. There's a lot less chance for it to stall up in the air and get a backlash. Nice and parallel, it's also gonna make a good subtle entrance. And speaking about that subtle entrance, not that that matters on a windy day if there's a bunch of ripple, but if you're fishing a day where it's pretty finessey and those fish are a little bit spooky, you do a nice sidearm cast, you know, a nice roll cast to keep that bait nice and parallel, slow it down, you can get it in there with minimal splash, which can be very important. That was a huge bass chasing bluegill.
There's like four or five of them over here chasing bluegill. Look at this. They've got them all ran up here in the corner. Watch. There's a ton of them right here chasing bluegill. Got him. There's like four of them here in the middle of filming a video. This is on that trickster. I, I don't even know what's happening right here. There's a whole bunch of fish chasing bluegill. I seen like four or five of them. Look at that. Perfect example. They're up nice and tight, close to this bank. Can, can I prove the point any better? Well, folks, it does not get any better than that to prove a nice sidearm cast, keep it subtle in there. Let's see if I scared them all off. I can't believe that. What's the irony of that? That fish blew up behind me and they were just had a whole pack of bluegill in here chasing them, pushing them. See if there's any more along this brush line. We interrupt this broadcast for a little trickster fishing. Well, that was a welcome surprise. Didn't expect that to happen, but there you go. Proof that that nice sidearm cast, nice and subtle in there does come in handy. All right, now the final tip for you folks that are struggling with that sidearm cast, I'm a right-hander. So for me, my dominant cast is from my right across my body to my left. You know, for me, that's the most comfortable way to cast it. For you left-handers, it's probably this left hand casting across your body to your right. But I get a lot of new folks that say, well, Debo, when I'm doing that sidearm cast, it doesn't go where I want it. My accuracy is off and it's going off into the bushes too far. Well, okay, take for example right here. If I'm trying to cast parallel to this bank line, a right-hander like me, as I cast and let this go, the number one thing is I always want to be watching directly where I want my lure to hit. I'm not watching my lure, my rod. I'm not watching the bank line. I want to watch exactly where that lure hits. And as I cast this lure off to the side, if I notice it's not hitting where I want, in my case, casting from my left across my body, if that lure is going too far to the left, and here in this case, if it kept going into the bushes here, my release point is too late. So as I reel this in here, I'll show you kind of what I'm talking about. As I go to cast this and it ends up going too far past, like that, into those bushes, that's not what I want to happen. I released it too late. So if you have that problem, consciously in your head when you're practicing this sidearm cast, tell yourself to let go too soon. As I wind up and cast this, say I want to let go sooner than I really need to. The sidearm cast is really helpful in situations like this as well. You can see here I've got a whole bunch of trees over the top of me. I can't use an overhand cast. So I'm up a little bit higher. The water's just a bit below me. So using this sidearm cast, I can cover this riprap bank all the way out there. Still a good subtle entrance and I can fish that whole side of that bank nice and easily. You know, a lot of people would say, oh, I don't mess with it when I've got trees above me. Work on that sidearm cast and I guarantee it will help you in your arsenal. Now the sidearm cast is also extremely helpful in situations like this. You can see above me, I can't cast overhead. I've got a bunch of trees, got a trees to the right of me here, but if I want to cover this, you know, the shoreline in parallel to it, I can't overhand. What am I going to do? Well, I can't cast my strong way this way. So you can either turn and do kind of a reverse or you can backhand it. Now for beginners, I honestly would just recommend reversing your cast. So instead of going this way with the roll cast or sidearm, I'm going to go this way with it. That's all I'm going to do. Same cast, just the opposite way. So here, Gets me nice and parallel to this bank line here. So this is a perfect example of why you want to be able to sidearm to the left across your body and to the right the other way. Whether you're left or right-handed, you want to be able to cast both ways with that sidearm roll cast. Now, one other thing I will tell you as a beginner is when you're working on this, you know, roll or sidearm cast to your non-dominant way. So me as a right-hander, to me, my dominant way is casting off to my left. That's very natural for me. It's my dominant. But when I'm casting off to the left, as you're working this cast, you're going to want to let go a little bit sooner than you normally would. So when I'm here, I'm going to let go just a little bit sooner as a right-handed caster. When I started casting off to my right, I noticed that I was casting way too far to the right. And in this example here, off into the bushes and such. So as you're practicing this cast, let go a little sooner than you feel that you think you should, and you'll start to get a little bit hang of it quicker. All right, so we're going to make a move for number three. Number three, I use a ton. And in the summer, it's probably my favorite thing to do next to frogging, and that's pitching around, you know, wood or cover. So going back to that golf analogy, I equate the pitch to a putt. You know, it's a short distance. I'm not trying to cover a, a whole huge, crazy large distance with it. The pitch, I'm pinpointing targets. I need to be extremely accurate. When you're flipping and pitching around a bunch of wood, you know, you're off six inches or a foot and you could be in a whole garbled mess and hung up and you might want to leave for the day. So trust me when I say working on that pitching accuracy will definitely help you leaps and bounds in the long run. The more confident you get with it, the more you can fish near that gnarly stuff, you know, the, the really thick, heavy brush all around in those little nooks and crannies without getting hung up all the time. And you'll find that you will catch a lot more in there, especially in the summer when they're tucked up close against that cover. So let's move around to a few spots and check out the pitch. Okay, so before we start flipping and pitching, we need to discuss the settings on the baitcaster. 
Now for me, I don't do anything different when I'm pitching and flipping when I'm just regular casting. So this is that Trickster 2 that I've been using. I can take this thing, throw it out there, make a good long cast, and that's how I set my bait caster. I don't do anything different for a pitch. I'll reel this in. And you can see with the exact same bait and exact same settings, I can take this and make a nice little pitch right over there. Okay, so what are those settings? Well, I keep my spool tension just so my spool has no side to side play. If you loosen this up, you can rock your spool back and forth. You'll kind of hear it click. I tighten this up just to remove that. I don't go any past it. I want to keep it good and loose, but I don't want this to move side to side. If you tighten it up a whole lot, that's going to slow your spool down and it's going to make it actually harder to pitch. When it comes to the brakes, that's really going to depend on your reel. Mine's uh, just about halfway-ish there. And that's good for me to make a nice long cast and to pitch with it. Okay, so for the pitching mechanics, there's three things that I can tell you that will help you a lot. Number one is the wrist. Your wrist doesn't move very well that way, like you're shaking a hand, there's not a lot of movement. Your wrist does move well this way, almost like you're revving an engine, you know, on a, a motorcycle. Up and down, you've got a whole lot better range of motion. So when you're starting out flipping and pitching, if you're having trouble, if you keep your hand completely up straight like this and the spool up, you're trying to do this motion, it makes it tough for people. Instead, take your reel, turn it over on its side and do this motion. I actually go with the butt of my rod inside my arm. Some people go outside. All depends on what you like. I go here and use this motion. You get a lot more range. Now, the second tip is the kind of the arm and hand motion. Imagine yourself painting a fence. You've got a paintbrush in your hand, you know? That's the kind of motion I use when I'm gonna pitch. Now you can keep your hand completely stationary here and just kind of do this, but I get a little bit more range and especially when I'm on the bank like this, when I put just a little bit motion behind it, it'll look like this. Now the third biggest tip if you're still having trouble with that pitch is thumb control. I cannot stress enough thumb control. One of the big problems with newer folks is they want to pendulum the bait, right? They get it started like this, throw it out, the bait goes up high and hits. If you don't have thumb control when that bait goes all the way up, it's gonna backlash. So if you have good solid thumb control, it'll help a lot. My thumb is always in contact with my spool when I'm pitching. I wanna feel the speed of that spool and I can let it accelerate or decelerate with just a little touch of my thumb. Now I'll show you what I'm talking about here when people pendulum the bait, this is what happens. A lot of you newer folks out there who are struggling to pitch probably have your arms straight up and down like this. You get the bait rocking back and forth, get it going this way, throw it, it goes all the way up and that happens. Now I started out pitching with my right hand so a lot of these things I've had to remind myself as I've been working with my left but if you do the tips that I'm showing you and you keep that bait nice and parallel to the water like that you can enter it in the water with just a slight little touch. So as you're working that pitch try to keep that bait as parallel to the water as possible and low. The higher it goes you know more of an arcing motion so to come down with a bigger splash you can spook the fish and it's more of a chance for that bait to stall and get a backlash. All right, now where do I like to use the pitch? Well, I like targets like this, you know, short little docks or bridges that you're going over. For bank anglers, this is a perfect spot to use the pitch. So it's a nice subtle approach. You can make multiple pitches to the target around the bridge on the side of it. It's a very efficient way to attack those spots. I also love to use the pitch in spots like this. So places where I'm real close, you can see here, just with a short little pitch, I can attack spots like this, little pieces of wood, isolated brush. These spots are always great for bank anglers to hit. If you ever see these out there make sure you stop at them now when i was talking about that brush motion that brush is a little ways out there so if i just try to do you know the normal just kind of grab it and eh, do one of these things probably not going to reach that spot out there so that's where i'll use kind of that paint brush approach and use my arm just a little bit and it nice and subtle just in front of it okay nothing there i can bring it back in make another pitch right in front of it here just like so, not too crazy, not a big splash. Now when you're using the pitch, it doesn't have to be isolated cover. Spots like this, you know, rocky drop-offs, fishing jetties, riprap banks, these are perfect times to use a pitch. You can make a lot of presentations with the lure, you don't have to expend a lot of energy, and most of the bites, you know, on these riprap or these little fishing jetties are coming within 10, 15 feet of the shore. So it's an efficient, nice, easy, subtle way to present that. Now lastly, the pitch is excellent for spots like this where you're trying to get under overhangs, docks, etc. I use the pitch the same way that I would a roll cast to target the places where an overhand cast just can't reach. You know, this spot, for example, I never would have been able to get under there, you know, with a standard overhand cast. All right, well, there you have it. Those are the three casts that I really, truly do believe will help you grow as an angler. If you're looking to step up your game, you know, right now you're only using an overhand cast, adding these will definitely help you. You know, they say knowledge is power, and I truly do believe the more tools you have when you go out there, the more successful you'll be. Now, I'd like you to comment below. Let me know if you've been using any of these casts to improve your game. And also comment below and let me know if you're having troubles with any of these, you know, the pitch, the sidearm, whatever troubles you have, I'll try to help you out below in the comments and give you some advice. Now, as I've said before, I am no pro, but I am always happy to tell you what I know. So leave your comments below. I love hearing from all of you. 
But that is all for me today. It looks like it's gonna start raining, so I'm gonna throw a few casts before it does. Of course, thank you all so very much for watching, and until next time,